if I don't prioritize going to bed early, I get a really terrible sleep score. Less than five hours sleep. <laughs> My lunch has just been a frozen pizza. I never thought I'd say this, but I can see how easy it would be to just keep this habit oh, of eating just junk stuff that doesn't make me feel good easy food that tastes real good forever and just just never going for walks never exercising not prioritizing going to bed early and just just being in this constant state of whinging about how i feel and just never doing anything to change it like <laughs> as horrible as it sounds right now it also is very attractive um because it seems easy but feeling like this is not easy I don't know where this footage is ever going to be used. It probably won't be used anywhere. I just, just want to talk and there's no one here. That I introduced fizzy drinks again during trimester one. I can't believe like how did I do that after spending so many years trying to give them up. Habits can, can melt away and you have to re-establish them. So how are we? all snacking on these and I have to show you they're so good. Thomas bought me this and um, my husband thinking it was absolutely hilarious. He's very easily amused but yeah these cookies are the East Coast Bakehouse Baking Better Biscuits vegan cocoa and hazelnut cookies and guys like mm. Mm -mm just beyond good, you know? I'm sure you do know that around these parts, you know, we're here to talk about health. Health to me does not mean not eating the cookies. It just means not living off of the cookies. And it is a lot more things than that. We need to update, okay? A brief recap. In the event that you are new, so my first pregnancy, smooth sailing. I was active throughout it, I was, at peak health, before all the lockdowns hit, I was going to the gym. When the lockdowns hit, I was doing home workouts, I was drinking smoothies, and you know, just cooking a lot of fresh meals. I was also sleeping like 10 hours a night. I was childless, I was having blissful sleeps. Always going on walks with my, my husband. The health, the health was good, and as a result, the pregnancy was pretty easy. I got to that great place with my health after a decade of learning and of recovering from really bad habits I developed as a teenager. As plenty of you are already aware, when I was 19, I was in an awful place with my health. I couldn't even walk for a few minutes without being extremely out of breath. I slept all day, I stayed awake all night, I just ate convenience food that didn't nourish me and far too much of it as like a comfort thing. And I put on a huge amount of weight, like 60 pounds. All these bad habits combined massively impacted my mental health, though it was kind of like a loop, it was like, the mental health was also making the habits worse. I'm sure some of you know what that feels like. It's just like this cycle that you feel so trapped in sometimes and that's where I was at. I can totally see now how what happened when I was younger, when I had really bad health and bad habits, I totally see how it happened. I just fell into a hole and I felt like there was no way to climb out of it even though there was. Before I got pregnant this time around, so I'm currently 16 weeks pregnant, again on my second child, and I had gotten back to pretty a pretty good place with my health before getting pregnant this time. I was, you know, killing the home workouts, I was back cooking fresh homemade meals, and very importantly, <laughs> the sleepless nights of babyhood, where behind me my son was sleeping much longer stretches through the night. Then, bam, trimester one, take two. Just Melanie on the floor. Extreme, extreme nausea. All day nausea that could only be cured by stacks of buttered toast and slash or McDonald's. I, I've never eaten as much McDonald's 
as I ate during my first few weeks of this first trimester like I just I couldn't look at anything in any way healthy like the only fruit I was consuming for a few weeks was orange juice <laughs> that doesn't really count I just felt absolutely dreadful and I stopped the home workouts I stopped going for walks I was just about surviving every day because I was looking after my toddler all day while feeling like this so I just wanted to keep him alive keep me alive and keep the little baby in my belly alive. But there was another really crappy pregnancy symptom that just completely wiped me out this time round. I don't remember having it last time. And if I did, it definitely wasn't this bad. Um, pregnancy insomnia is a thing. Very soon after I found out that I was pregnant again, I made the decision to night wean my son from breastfeeding. I really wanted to get on top of slowing down my milk production before you know, going into breastfeeding another baby. And after that, my son was just like sleeping all night. Yet, during this first trimester, I was like awake more than ever. I was waking up multiple times to pee, which is common anyway. So like three, four times a night, I was having to get up to pee. But I couldn't like, easily just like get back into bed and fall back asleep. I was just lying there thinking, why am I not going to sleep? Time is passing, it's been half an hour, I really need to sleep. And it was so horrible because then you're scraping yourself out of bed the next morning and then begins the chaos of a day with a toddler. Um, so by the end of the first trimester, quick trigger warning related to weight talk, um, but I had gained 10 pounds and the average gain in this time frame is only one to four pounds. And I know the first time around I gained about five pounds in the firm first trimester and just because I'm very in tune with my body I'm very aware of what it feels like to live within my body I knew that most of the weight gain wasn't related to the actual pregnancy like the the baby or anything like that it was from my poor lifestyle habits my choices and the reason that mattered to me um and the reason I think it's important to talk about this is because like for me obviously as any woman wants, like you want a low risk pregnancy. I had a completely low risk pregnancy the first time around. I have been made very aware through people I know, through chats with my doctor, that gaining too much weight in your pregnancy, like too quickly, can increase your risk for complications like gestational diabetes and blood pressure issues like preeclampsia, which can be really dangerous. And they are things that I have worried about. And while I know, especially after going through birth already. I know I'm not in control of everything pregnancy related, everything related to my birth. I'm very aware of that, but I'm also the kind of girl who focuses on what she can control. And there are things within my control. I do have the ability to stack the cards in my favor and to minimize my chances of, um, you know, those complications. So that's what I want to do. And yeah, I'm in trimester two now, as I said, 16 weeks, and I'm feeling a lot better. Taking things nice and slow regarding getting back into exercise, like I'm just focusing for now on walks and just getting my steps up, like moving more during the day, being a bit more like active and less sedentary. Buying more whole foods when we go food shopping over like frozen convenience food. And I'm very happy to report Partially thanks to what I'm about to talk about, I am sleeping better, which has the biggest, out of anything, out of anything sleep for me as a mother to a young child, as a pregnant woman, sleep has the biggest impact I feel on my, on, on my physical and mental well-being. Last night we stayed up having fun with family and just catching up, you know, but I'm paying the price today because I have a toddler that likes to get out of bed very, very early in the morning. If I don't prioritize going to bed early, I get a really terrible sleep score. Less than five hours sleep. I can't imagine that's optimal for growing a human, but there we go. I'll be having a nap. Don't you worry. Just extremely irritable. Want to cry? Toast is the only thing that will help. And of course, I'm here to talk about what I'm doing to not only track all this, but to like listen to my body and to respond to where my body's at. And to, as the theme of the campaign uh, sings, 
to feel my power because the power is there and I have so many challenge videos I want to do like quitting caffeine for a month, going to bed at 8 p.m. every night for a month, you know, trying to hit 10,000 steps a day for a month, like all these kinds of self-improvement challenges I'm feeling really passionate about right now and um, a big reason for this like re-sparking of my passion for this, which is something that was just so important to me before, is, is this. On my wrist, this is a Fitbit smartwatch. It's a Versa 3. It translates what your body is saying to you into a language that you can very easily understand and actually react to and do something with. And I kid you not, it just feels like part of my limb now. Like I don't feel aware of it being on my body anymore. And yet it empowers me with so much data. Now do bear in mind that I'm pregnant, so my resting heart rate is higher than it would usually be. But even look at just since I started wearing this, like my resting heart rate has really leveled out. It's pretty much the same on a day-to-day -day basis, which is so good to see. And I think like even just being more consistent with my walking, I think is helping that. There's so much online about heart rate and stuff, but yeah, walking can actually gradually slow your heart rate, which is so interesting. It just gets me so giddy. Like you all know that your girl loves a bit of tracking. I, over the years, have shared about how much I've benefited from writing things down, like my mood, my meals, all that good stuff. And I could do all of that in this little watch now and because I, I don't have time to do anything. I don't even have time to scratch my bum <laughs> being a mommy and, um, yeah, I really, I miss sitting down with, with journals, but I just have to be honest with myself and honest with you about where I'm at. And I'm pressed for time, but I'm, I'm needing, I'm needing that bit of kind of extra motivation, encouragement. So Fitbit reached out to me and I got so excited, like stupid excited. So much so that I have entered into a long-term partnership with them to just like take you on this health journey with me because they are all about helping people to live more active, healthier lives. A huge thing that has driven me over the years on my YouTube channel, um, I just have loved sharing my, my um, achievements, I suppose, in, in my health journey, not just physical health, but mental health. Like I've shown so much since I was 23, I'm now 32. Yeah, like like most people, I, I lost my way a little bit. That happens in life. Um, it's not a case where you make a habit and then it's a habit forever. Habits can, can melt away and you have to reestablish them. And um, and I, I've, I've just, I've needed something like this. It's, it's super sleek and pretty. You can very easily change the, the strap on there. This tracks your heart rate. You can see your step count. You can use Fitbit to track your meals if you want to and your water and even mindfulness. And they have lots of like little mindfulness videos and it's lovely to have all of that in one place. So many incredible sleep metrics available through the Fitbit Premium membership, but you can, even without the Premium membership, you can still see like your sleep score and how much you were kind of moving and tossing during the night, how long you were awake, what kind of deep sleep you got. This one, the Versa 3 has like blood oxygen readings. You can play your music out loud through it. It's so, so good. I'm over the moon to be partnering up with Fitbit for the next few months to like take you on this kind of journey. I've only just realized how many people actually use these. Even my brother and his fiance were over there recently and they both were wearing Fitbit. And I completely see the attraction. It even gives you like a daily readiness score with Fitbit Premium. Here is today's daily readiness score. Um, I guess, I guess I'm well able for an intense workout. The data does not lie. <laughs> um, and it has a lot of workouts within the app, so I've literally no excuse. <laughs> so smart. They don't call them smartwatches for no reason. Regarding the step counter on this, I definitely don't obsess over it because like I know I'm I'm nowhere near like a consistent 10,000 steps every day yet but I find it very incentivizing to get steps in like if it's reached say 5 p.m. and my steps are only at four or five thousand I will 
be like, right, let's go for a quick walk. Just because I, I feel better getting into bed if it's at least at like 7,000. I just feel like, oh, I've done my cardio system a solid today. It's important to acknowledge that sometimes we do need a helping hand in the same way, you know, sometimes you need a workout buddy if you're actually gonna commit and do your workouts. Um, sometimes you need another member of your household to be on board with the healthier dinners and like less takeaways. It's very hard to sit there with your fresh home cooked meal when someone is sitting opposite you with a mountain of Chinese food. I think enough Fitbit is in that kind of same category, you know, it's like giving me that information, letting me feel like more joy when, when I do see like, oh, I slept well or oh, like I was, re I was really active today, even though I very easily could have just been a couch potato that feels really good for me and it is it's pushing me to really slowly get back there to where I, I used to be when I was super happy with my health and you know making videos about like fitness tips like oh I just miss that girl in motherhood we we don't have to and we shouldn't lose ourselves completely of course it changes your life of course you change as a person but health and wellness and fitness and like these are things I was so passionate about for years and years and years and I just really don't want to be that woman who reaches 50 and it's like oh yeah that's where it all went wrong when I had the children I, I don't want to become resentful of this incredibly beautiful privileged life-changing journey I never want to look back on it and feel any kind of like oh like that was standing in the way of me reaching my full potential because it's not I am standing in my own way and I need to step aside and wear my Fitbit and see that ah yes there are things that I can do to improve my situation today and tomorrow for next week me and next year me that is how I've always thought and that that um, it's been a big wake up call noticing that sliding, you know, noticing me so easily slotting into just, oh, I'll go to McDonald's and oh, I'm sure I'll just sit here all day and feel sorry for myself. <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, it was a time, the first trimester, it was a time period, but you know, it's past. I'm no longer sick all day. I don't have to continue those habits. So yeah, that was a little update. Um, the cookies are still, they're there looking at me and I want more. I want to dip one into a cup of tea. So I'm gonna leave you. I'd love to know where you're at health-wise. How do you feel every day out of 10? Comment that below. Let me know if you've any experience with smartwatches like Fitbit, what you like about them, if you've, got an interest in trying one, any reservations, I'd love to chat to you down below and um, thanks for watching and I'm gonna go have my cookie, have my tea and go for a nice walk in the park, pushing the buggy, getting my heart rate up so I can fall into bed and have a delightful sleep. Right, I'm off. See yous. Mwah, mwah.